Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. What is going on? Welcome to the Hogs of War miniatures game here on Tabletop Simulator. Now this is the demo for the King of the Swirl mode. And basically we're going to be going through every single area of this miniatures game and talking about it, giving my opinions on things and basically first impressions and a little bit of how to play what I've picked up on. Uh, and of course, hopefully later on, uh, over the next coming days, I will be showcasing gameplay for this. Uh, but for now, at the moment, the Kickstarter for the miniatures game has reached, at the current count of making this video, £95,000, which has almost, uh, well, over a thousand backers, which is insane when you think about it. The community has really rallied around this Kickstarter, and to be honest, I am hella excited to start playing this, to really get into detail about it, every aspect of it, uh, because this is of course just the demo. This doesn't include the uh, the stretch goals that have been met, you know, the additional things that will be added in, new tanks, new armored vehicles, lots of in-game stuff, you know, the, the, the quality of the cars and everything. There's a lot to look forward to with this. Um, so if you haven't backed it already on the Kickstarter, the link will of course be in the description. You'll also find the link to Stone Sword Games' uh, Facebook page linked at the end of this video as well. Um, so plenty of things to check out. As someone who's never really gotten into board games or miniatures games, this was pretty overwhelming for me considering the amount of stuff and rules and, and bits and pieces that this game has. But if you've played the card game, it can give you a good uh, head start in terms of having an overview as to what to expect from the, the pigs, their abilities, their weapons and additional things uh, like the vehicles that you see. Uh, but we'll get on to each phase of gameplay in just a second. Uh, in terms of the board, obviously you can see here that it has a bunch of different things. Terrain is a key part of gameplay. Um, you have the main plains here, which is just standard grass, I guess. Uh, you have forests, you have mountains, you have roads, and you have rivers. Now, rivers are impassable. Mountains uh, can block explosive damage. Forests can block gun damage and roads can increase your speed and yeah, th there are going to be other bits and pieces in terms of terrain when the Kickstarter is uh, finally funded. I'm looking forward to that, um, which will also include, I think, swamps and lakes as well, uh, which will go hand in hand with the aqua tank, which I'm very excited for. Um, but the main way, of course, to win in this game is to complete mission objectives. So you'll see here, I'll get to those in just a second, but you'll see that you have a counter here. The first one to get to 12 is the winner. You get 12 promotion points, you win. And you can see there are 18 of them in total in this demo. Uh, but to give some examples, destroy an enemy airship using a friendly airship's action, that will give you two promotion points. Or do the easier one, which is to have the longest airship on the battlefield, and that's in terms of time. So just some examples of objectives there and I mean there's plenty of them if you complete them of course you'll be able to be given more of them so on and so forth um, but we're going to talk about the phases of gameplay uh, and get on to all of those there's a lot to unpack here so uh, grab some popcorn chill out because it's going to be <laughs> a long ride so the first phase of gameplay is the base building stage now this comes in two different forms you have the hex form which as you can see here from this little counter, this is your base. Uh, so you start by placing it anywhere on the board that is within the area designated in the rule book, or at least the campaign book, sorry. Uh, so if it's four player, you'll basically have this corner, that corner, that corner, or that corner. Um, so you place your base, which is represented here on the board by a hex. And then you have a larger overview of your base over here where you have the primary base building mechanics. Now some details will need to be added uh, in future in regards to what each of these can do because for a new player looking at this, it can be kind of confusing as to what is going on. Now you start with your HQ building, which you can place anywhere and you can start to see where you need to think about where you're placing things when you unlock them and you buy them. Um, so I've placed my HQ building. Uh, so once both players have done that, that phase is over and you move to the next phase. So there are two types of, I guess, currency 
uh, in the miniatures game. The primary one is Swill. This is, I guess, the more money-based system, which you use to upgrade and buy new units. Uh, new units will cost a certain amount, and that is determined by this Swill icon here with a number on it. Um, so, you know, you already start with Grunts, uh, but if you wanted to unlock the Engineer units, they would cost three, orderlies cost three, Snipers cost 3, Bombardiers cost 3, Tanks cost 6, and Planes cost 8. Well, Planes and Airships. Um, and you can determine how much swill you have, which is gathered from refineries, if you decide to get these. Um, they can bring in swill, but also if you manage to capture swills on the battlefield. So as you go, for instance, if I just pick up this dude here, who uh, can be used as your primary grunt. Just had to scale him down a bit because he was a little bit big. So if I were to start here, we're, we're kind of shifting into the ground unit phase. Um, we'll get into that in just a second. But as an example, if I were to be here and I were to capture the swill, I would place one of these bad boys, these little flags, onto the swill and then each turn or round I haven't really figured that out yet. Um, you will gain two swill. Uh, and like I said, the more swill you have, the more you can move this counter up on your baseboard. And the max, of course, is 12. So yeah, once you've gathered swill, you can then buy upgrade cards, which can be used to upgrade your units in terms of weapons or just abilities that they can have. When you do upgrade or buy upgrade cards, uh, you need to place them, if I could just grab one of these, you need to place them underneath the unit card, just so it shows that they have that ability. Uh, but the main thing you need to remember is that you can only buy two upgrade cards per unit, and those will be remaining with that unit throughout the entire game, so you need to choose wisely when it comes to what upgrade you want to use on whichever pig. Uh, these icons here are, of course, for the Grunt, um, but hopefully we will be having uh, more actual you know, models in the Kickstarter thanks to the amount that has been raised so far. Um, I'm getting off topic here, but uh, yeah, those are upgrade cards. You can also buy airship modifications with your Swill. That is if you have actually unlocked uh, the use of blimps or airships. Like I said, it all comes down to the cost of swill, so if you wanted to unlock a airship or a plane, then once it's unlocked, once you have paid the right amount, it will be unlocked, and that will then come into the aerial phase, which we'll get onto in just a second. So yeah, you can use swill in terms of aerial combat in unlocking these for your biplanes, and if you want to get an airship up and going, then of course you'll have to uh, get yourself an airship hangar for it to be built into your base and then from there you can then purchase airship modifications to build your actual airship. It can be as big or as short or small as you want it to be but basically once you have all of the pieces in place you can see there's, uh, there's plenty of nose pieces. These uh, cards haven't been shuffled yet but if I just find a middle any second. This has a cannon bay so you can see here you can make the airship bigger or smaller and it will all include different things you can do including bomb bays, cannon bays and of course you know regular guns on the front and this is of course the primary area for the aerial phase in moving your airship. So yeah I did get a little bit ahead of myself talking about swill so let's talk about the secondary battlefield type uh, currency. It's not really a currency, it's just about your turns and that is action points. Now action points determine what it is you do on the battlefield. Now each unit will have a certain amount of action points. Uh, pigs ground units will have two action points and vehicles will have three. So for instance if I want to move my grunt you can only move one hex at a time that movement would be one action point. And then if there was an enemy pig that was close to me, or an enemy unit, I mean, he's a lot larger. I kind of need to 
scale it down a little bit. So yeah, I've used one action point to move, and I'm going to use my other action point, as I have two, to try and deal damage to this enemy unit that is closest to me. Now if you look at the Grunt's card, you can see his default weapon is a rifle, and the dice determine the damage that you will do with that action point during this turn. So you can either roll one melee dice, which will of course mean that you're using your bayonet against him, which of course is attached to your rifle, or if you have a range of two, so if he was here, then you would shoot him with your rifle, and that would mean that you roll two gun dice. Now it's very simple in how these dice are organized in terms of color. So red, oops, red is melee, blue is gun dice, and green is explosive dice. So as you can see, I'm going for, he was positioned here. So I'm going for a melee attack with my bayonet. So I will roll one red dice. And that gave me a hit. So you have several symbols on the dice themselves. You have these two here, which is a standardized hit, which will deal one damage, which means that his health is now down to one. As I said, uh, every single unit in terms of ground units has two health because uh, it's based off of their action points and vehicles have three action points which means that they have three health so a, rand a standard hit sorry does one damage you have this icon here which is a glance that does uh, basically half I guess and then you also have this symbol here which is a critical if I were to roll a critical with this dice then that would deal two damage and this unit would be dead so he would go off the board um, so that's a very very basic overview of ground unit uh, action points um, but that isn't really the phase that comes next because after the base building phase which we did earlier uh, comes the aerial phase so the base building stage is complete for both players and if you happen to have already unlocked some kind of vehicle, either that of a, a biplane or an airship, uh, you will move on to the aerial phase of combat. Uh, so aerial phase, normally <laughs> in the physical game, you would have a shield here to block uh, either of these cards here so that your opponent can't see. Um, but basically if you have, let, let's say for instance we have uh, this biplane here on the board. Uh, the numbers here can seem a little bit confusing. Um, obviously we've already talked about the cost of uh, this vehicle. Um, but all you really have to do is place the direction that you want to go and the speed and turn that you want to, to take. So let's say that I want to go, you know, straight forward as I'm sat over there. So I'd put one of these counters on the middle to go straight forward. And then I want to go on initiative four, which would allow me to move three spaces. So one, two, and three. Now there's other complicated things in there in regards to uh, speed and your, your turn. So I might be wrong in, in, in how I did that because these are things I'm still still figuring out because the, the, the rules, uh, they do explain a lot of you know what is happening during aerial combat, but there's just small intricate details that I'm still a little bit confused on. So if you guys know more about it, then feel free to talk about it in the comments. But again, a lot of this will be clarified in later videos. Uh, where we'll really get into the depths of uh, the specifics basically of how to use these because from from I haven't seen much gameplay so it's difficult to really determine if what I'm doing is correct um, but when it comes to damaging other vehicles it comes down to that split second decision as to who is traveling faster or slower uh, and basically you know if your opponent is traveling slower than you are or if you're traveling slower than they are then you know you have a, a greater or better opportunity to deal damage and like I said the range here one two three four or five um, 
you know you roll a certain amount of dice that is there as well you can also unlock bomb bays look guys there there is a lot to it there is a lot to this phase but at the very start of a match you wouldn't be really you wouldn't be doing the aerial phase just yet because at the very beginning of any game these would be locked so you would move right on to the ground unit phase so the ground unit phase is something that we've I mean I've kind of already covered in regards to action points but as I said earlier the tank has more action points than your standard you know infantry units they have three so uh, if we look at the tanks card you can see you have a machine gun and a cannon and the combination of dice here is very interesting because the cannon has a range of six which means that let's say for instance uh, this guy is over here if we count the amount of if we count the distance basically so let's go for an easy one let's make sure he's like in line with him so that's what one two three four five six so if he's all the way over there you can use your tank to shoot him so if I'm going for a range of six I roll one explosive dice and one melee dice as well I can't actually pick up both dice at the same time so we'll roll that one and then we will roll this one so I got both a critical and a regular hit but that basically kills him anyway because a critical will destroy him critical hits deal two damage standard hit still one damage so I did three his health is two so that unit is dead so in terms of using other action points you can see that I use my first one to kill that unit so I still have two action points remaining my other action point I can use to turn one so I can change the direction I'm traveling so I'm gonna go in this direction so that's my other action point used and then I'll use my final action point to move forward by one hex so with the ground unit phase you're either going to be moving attacking or if you do eventually bring out the orderly you will be healing and as mentioned earlier, you know, you'll get to certain points where you can capture stuff and capturing, I believe, also takes up an action point. So if I were to move my unit into the mountains, you can see here that I am protected from explosive damage, or at least it will deal less. And I think an action point is taken when you capture something or, you know, the enemy might have captured it already. So let's say an enemy unit has already captured this. Your action point will be taken by capturing it for yourself, removing their icon, so on and so forth, and again, still keeping an eye on your objectives as you go. So it's basically uh, trying to keep track of what is going on in the battlefield and what is going on with your objectives, what it is you're aiming for or should be aiming for as you go, which is interesting because, you know, it's going to change up your playstyle depending on your objectives because you need to get these promotion points to win and again, you know, keeping track of Swill, keeping track of your base. There's just lots of different things going on. But I'm really excited to start playing this over the next coming days. So like I said, you do have the rule book here and the campaign book as well. Um, but we've done the base phase. We've done the aerial phase. We've done the ground phase. So it's back to the recruiting phase. And yeah, this is where you decide to spend Swill to buy upgrades, like I said earlier. Uh, both for your units and for you know your airships or whatever um, you spend that time upgrading and then there is the end phase where the coin is then given back to the player that is going to go first and it's the same with the card game you know it goes back and forth uh, on who goes first per round so after the recruitment phase is the end phase and yeah this is also where you determine if you have achieved any of your objectives uh, so if you have you will move your counter forward and so on and so forth and if you eventually get to 12 you will win so backtracking just a little bit let's talk about these symbols here on all of the cards we've already talked about the swill so that is the cost of upkeep for each unit you then have the sausage symbols which are the action points so all ground units the infantry units have two the tank has three and the plane units have one uh, and then you have this little stopwatch symbol here which basically is the initiative and that determines the playing order of each unit so if we flip all these around 
It sounds complicated, but it is quite simple. Uh, if we're in the ground unit phase, uh, then the lowest initiative goes first. There's a little, <laughs> little token stuck underneath. Uh, so you can see that the orderly has one, the engineer has two, the grunt has three, the sniper has four, the bombardier has five, and the tank has six. So that is the order that you will play. So the orderly will go first, then the engineer, then the grunt, then the sniper, then the bombardier, then the tank. Um, and of course that is also why the, I guess that's why the aerial phase comes before the ground unit phase, because they have an initiative of, well, it's not actually fixed. Uh, the, the aerial phase of combat is, uh, is is passive, basically. So it's determined by your choice of uh, turn speed or whatever. So let's say I was going to use my uh, airship. I was gonna determine my direction. If I was gonna go for a turn speed of, well, if I was gonna go for an, an initiative, sorry, of three, and then on my plane, I was going to go straight forward and I was going to go for an initiative of four. Then once those have been decided, uh, my plane, my good old Zeppelin will go first because he has a lower initiative of three. And then it will be my biplane to go next as he has an initiative of four. So the lowest initiative determines which vehicle goes first during the aerial phase. Again, I know it sounds a bit complicated, but basically, you know, both players do this at the same time, uh, which means that, you know, once speed and uh, direction have been determined and whether or not you're gonna shoot or roll a dice, you know, you both do it at the same time and that makes for very interesting aerial combat. So yeah, that is initiative. The, the stopwatch is the initiative of the order in which your units will go. And the final one is the unit cap. So the unit cap comes into play during the recruitment phase and basically players aren't able to recruit over said unit cap. Uh, so you need to keep an eye on that when you look to unlock new units as you go. There is then the question of all of these other tokens uh, and to break them down uh, you have these bomb tokens which come into play when you unlock uh, or at least when you purchase a bomb bay either on your biplane or a bomb bay on your zeppelin. Uh, I don't actually have one on my current one uh, but you would place them there and then you can use them. You can drop bombs on uh, different hexes as you go. Again lots of detail in there but we'll get into that at another point in time. There are also stun tokens, which you'll recognize from the card game, horrible things, <laughs> but they work in pretty much the same fashion, uh, depending on uh, a certain weapon upgrade card you might use or uh, a certain ability that you might have that can be applied. Stun tokens can be added in the same way uh, to ground units and such. I don't think that uh, vehicles can be stunned. That wouldn't really make sense, but I could be wrong. But again, extra details we'll get into in future. And then we come to deployables. Now you have the reference card here in terms of what the deployables can do. They act in a passive way uh, during the battle. Uh, so you can see that the cost of each deployable is written here. Cost of two swill, three swill, five swill, and four swill. You have AA guns, mines, pillboxes, and artillery. And a lot of the time you're probably going to be wanting to use these to protect your base wherever possible because if your base ends up getting surrounded, so if enemy units are placed here and here, then you cannot bring out any new units. Uh, it's a tricky one, it really is, but that will then turn your team's attention to this area and stuff can happen. <laughs> There's a lot to it, but... Like I said, it's, um, whoopsie daisy. But yeah, if you wanted to take the time to build deployables, um, they take two action points maximum to build up. So let's say I had a grunt, grunt unit who was deciding to deploy a deployable in this spot right here. That would cost me one action point to place it, but to fully build it, it would cost me two. So I can decide to stay where I am and build this, or I can use one action point to place it, 
and if I decide to not fully build it, you place one of these construction tokens onto the uh, deployable, and then I could maybe move or I can shoot and I can, you know, someone can come back to it later to use an action point to fully build it up. And of course you use the deployable reference to determine the damage output of uh, whatever gun or whatever deployable, sorry. Uh, and of course mines are the only ones that don't have a reference because, you know, that comes in when a pig ends up standing on said hex and, and damage is, is dealt and such. So let's say there is an enemy in range of my pillbox. You can see here he's one, two, three hexes away. So we use the deployable reference to check what dice we need to use in order to try and deal some damage. So it's a single melee dice and a single gun dice, which I have here. Now, vehicles can't be damaged unless you roll a critical hit. So if I'm able to uh, roll two hits, they, they would equal one critical hit and that would deal damage to the tank. So we'll roll the gun dice and we will roll this dice and that gives me a hit and a glance. Unfortunately that doesn't equal to a critical hit, but if I were, if I were able to manage to roll a critical hit any second now, let's just pretend I did, right? If I rolled a critical then I would deal damage to the tank and that would be indicated by one of these. So you place a flame token on the tank to indicate that it has been damaged uh, and that would remove one health from the tank. So he's gone down from three health to two and that is also where, you know, an enemy uh, could use one of their units. Where Where is he? There he is. Not you. <laughs> this one. So let's pretend this guy's an engineer. You could use the engineer to uh, to help repair tanks. And um, it doesn't say it on the card necessarily. Oh yes, it does. Remove all um, all flame, all flame damage, all of these damages uh, from friendly adjacent tanks. So if this was an engineer unit uh, and you were within range of said unit. You know, you could use your action points to move to the necessary area and then use another action point uh, to remove the damage, basically. So again, don't forget that the sausages indicate the things you can do. The action points then add up to the total and you go from there. Remember, vehicles can't be damaged unless it's a critical roll with the dice. And deployables, like I said, act in a passive manner. So if there are enemies that are within range then you are more than welcome during the ground unit phase to roll the necessary range with the dice again determined by the deployable reference and yeah you can go from there also i forgot to mention if a tank does take critical damage then on the next roll to try and damage the tank again you can roll a second time so if I've damaged this tank again, it comes back around to the ground unit phase and, you know, he's still in the same range or whatever, whatever range it is, uh, determines the dice, obviously. Um, but I would then, you know, try and roll again to get a critical, but then I would be able to roll again to, to do the same thing. Whoa, I didn't mean to pick that up. But yeah, if we look in the rules, it says that uh, hog tanks are only damaged by critical hits, as we already know. Uh, each time the tank suffers a critical hit, the opponent rolls a VDD. Any burn results uh, apply a burn token to the tank immediately, which causes an additional VDD to be rolled the next time the tank suffers a critical hit. And if the result on the VDD is damage, indicated by those two damage symbols, or a critical hit, as we know that symbol already, then you apply, you apply a 1 AP token to the tank. Now those are these final tokens over here. So you apply one of those, oops. <laughs> you apply one of those to the tank. Now if it were the other way around and the tank was looking to damage the pillbox, uh, you would have to roll an explosive critical hit in order to destroy, or in order to damage or destroy said deployable. Now interestingly, you are able to place units inside deployables. So let's say that this tank was going to shoot 
this deployable. If the critical hit were to occur, then of course the deployable would be destroyed and any units that were inside said deployable would have a stun token applied to them. The final token I haven't really talked about is this one, which I'm guessing is for healing, most likely for your orderly or any sort of weapon or ability that you get that can be used to heal. So let's say that this unit here is on one health. It has lost an action point uh, because of damage. Uh, I would then go to heal him. He is back up to two health. And yeah, simple as. Uh, I think that the pig tokens here, you know, the, the unit tokens specifically, uh, when you flip them, I think they're meant to have a damage side. Uh, so if I have an orderly that is on the battlefield, he gets damaged, you then flip it. And that's an easy way of indicating that the pig has been damaged. But in the demo, it's it's currently not here. So that is a very brief overview of the Hogs of War miniatures game. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about what to expect from this. Like I said, there will be gameplay coming up soon. Uh, I've got a lot of things planned for this going forward. Learning all of the intricate details uh, and understanding uh, everything that is to be understood with this game. There's a lot of different things that can go on during a battle. Lots of things to expect. Uh, but it's just ironing out those finer details for me. Like, you know, figuring out here in the base building stage what all of these things are, what they're called. I mean, sure, you've got your HQ building. You've got your oil refineries. You've got your air base, you've got your hangar for your zeppelins. Uh, but then you have these, you know, you've got these like radar dishes and you've got uh, these bomb symbols and, and sniper symbols. You know, it, it's just figuring out what all of these do and how they relate to what is going on on the battlefield. I'm sure we'll find out plenty of details going forward. I know that Stone Sword Games are looking to iron out any of these issues. So if you have any questions... Uh, from your playtime here on Tabletop Simulator playing the miniatures game, then do let them know. I'm sure they'll be looking for f for feedback as much as possible. Uh, I know I've sort of sent over a bunch of my own feedback to them, um, but like I said, don't forget to check out their Facebook page. Don't forget to check out their YouTube channel. Everything in between. And uh, yeah, that has been the miniatures game. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll catch you all later for the next one. Destination